Okay, hey everybody, good day to you all. God bless you and welcome to today's study of God's Word. We're going to pick it up today, Joshua chapter 23. Uh, before we get started, let's go to our Father in prayer like we always do. So, Yahweh, Heavenly Father, I pray that you open eyes, open ears this day, and let us receive the wisdom that you would have us receive from your Word today. So, let's get right into it book of Joshua chapter 23 verse 1 and it reads <clears throat> and it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age and uh, God had given Israel rest from all their enemies the land rested from war back in Joshua chapter 11 verse 23 this was eight years uh, eight years before verse 2 and Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them I am old and stricken in age verse 3 and ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. 4. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan, with all, from Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward, this being the Mediterranean Sea. Verse 5, And the Lord your God, He shall expel them from before you, and drive them out from out of your sight, and ye shall possess their land, as the Lord your God hath promised you. And if God makes a promise in His word, you can guarantee it's going to come to pass exactly as it is written. For God's word as a whole comes to pass exactly as it is written. And no one can change it. And that's a great thing. Verse 6. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all. Did he say part? No, he said all. That is written in the book of the law of Moses. That ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. And uh, this is very good uh, instruction. You want to keep facing God, you don't want to turn to the right hand or to the left. Why? Because to follow the book of the law, to follow God's laws, is to do good, is to do right. And that's what you want to do, beloved. You want to do good, you want to do right, and you want to be blessed by God. How do you be blessed by God? You follow Him, follow His commandments the best you can. And when you fall short, you repent. That's the beauty of Christianity. And that's the beauty of what came from the terrible price that Jesus Christ paid on the cross with his life, with his blood. Christians can repent and have their sins washed away, washed clean, and you have a clean slate, clean page in the book of life to keep serving God. So don't, don't let Satan trip you up and cause you to stumble and turn to the right hand or to the left stay facing God and in his path and when the accuser comes along and accuses you of your sin you have either already repented or just repent for your sins and they're washed away and the accuser has nothing to accuse you of <clears throat> verse 7 that ye come not among these nations. This means that ye, that ye not associate with or that ye intermarry or intermingle with these heathen nations. These that remain among you. Now remember that they didn't destroy all of the heathen like they were instructed to. They put some to tribute to work for them. That's who Joshua was talking about. Neither make mention of the name of their gods, small g, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. And that's in the first two commandments. Uh, 
of the Ten Commandments. Verse 8. But cleave means hold fast unto the Lord your God as you have done unto this day. 9. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. Why? Because God was with them. 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you as he hath promised you. And, and this is certainly... Uh, possible and certainly has happened uh, whenever you're doing uh, a mission for God or fighting with God on your side one man of you will put to flight a thousand of the enemy but if you're going to fight and you don't have God with you and God didn't send you uh, one of the enemy will probably put a thousand of you to flight so make sure that whenever you go to war and you go to fight, make sure God is with you and you're doing it for a just cause and a righteous cause. As long as that's the case and God is with you, you don't have anything to worry about, my friend. 11. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. This means be diligent and love the Lord your God. It's easy to love God. He's awesome. And His love uh, extends to you uh, just in, in, a, in a quantity, in an amount that you just you can't quantify. It's, it's just uh, immeasurable. Twelve. If you love Him. Else, if you do in any wise go back, that means turn from out of the way of God and cleave unto the remnant of these nations if you go back and you intermarry with these nations even these that remain among you even these that you put to tribute that you didn't destroy and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you 13 know for a certainty is it possible? No. God says, No, for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And there it is. Uh, pretty straightforward. 14. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And you shall know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. This word thing can be translated word. Not one word uh, hath failed thereof. 15. Therefore it shall come to pass, that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God hath promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things, if you turn away from him and intermingle with these heathen, until he hath destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. 16. When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods, small g, and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given unto you. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, is this going to come to pass? Uh, I believe it will come to pass, because they didn't drive out all the heathen like God had told them to, uh, before they were entered into the promised land. I guess we'll have to keep reading and find out. All right. I love you all because you love... Well, first of all, that's going to conclude today's study of the Word of God. And I love you for studying God's Word. More importantly, God loves you for studying His Word. He's the one you want to worry about pleasing, not man. Why is that? Because man can't do much for you. 
God can do anything for you. He can bless you and based upon your actions and that you should receive blessings or based upon your actions, he can bring the curses upon you. He leaves it up to us. If we deserve curses, that's what we're going to get. If we uh, do our best to serve him and love him and do right and then repent when we fall short, we're going to receive blessings. It's straightforward with God. There's no gray area. All right. Don't miss the next lecture. I love you all. Thank you for watching.